In this tutorial, you're going to find out how to read a JSON file and put it into variables in Unity to use within your game. This is really useful because if you had, a, for example, a set of different characters in your game and you wanted them all to have different statistics, you could store them all in a JSON file and then read them in. And that way it makes it really easy for editing and testing to tweak different things like the amount of health of a character without having to work out where it is within your project. So let's get going. The first thing that we're going to need is our JSON file. I'm going to put this in the resources folder. I want it just to be a text file, so I'm going to show this in Explorer. I'm going to create a new text file. And I'm going to call it JSON. Text. We'll edit that in Visual Studio, so we'll just leave that there for now. I also want to add a script. And let's just call it JSON Reader. So let's open both of these in Visual Studio. Now before we write our script, let's just make a JSON file. Now these are really format dependent, so you need to make sure you get your formatting right. They're also case sensitive. So you start with the curly brackets. You then put what is going to be the name of the class that you're going to read it into. Then you use the square brackets. And in between the square brackets is where your data goes. So for my, I'm going to have three bits of data. I'm going to have my name. And that's going to be a string. It's important to note that JSON is, only uses the double quotations, not the single quotations. Health is going to be an integer, so I don't need the quotation marks around the 100. And you don't need a comma after the last entry. Now I'm just going to duplicate this three times so that we've got more data. You also only need the comma if you've got another entry coming, so we'll delete that comma. And that's your completed JSON file. So let's save that. And let's go and write the reader. Now the first thing we'll need is simply a reference to that JSON file. Because it's inside our project, we'll just use text asset. Next up, we're going to have to create a class that has the name, the health and the manner in it. We're also going to want to use system serializable and that will make it so that the JSON file reader can actually see all of the different fields. So this is okay if you've only got one person, but we had three, so we want to make another class which turns this into an array. And you can see here we have an array of these. So now in this array we can store each of our different entries in the, from the JSON file. Finally we just need to make an instance of this class that we can use to read it into. It's important to note that this player here is the player at the top of the JSON file and it's case sensitive so you need to make sure they're the same. If they're not the same you won't get any errors, but it won't read in the data. So it's a little bit of a you know catch. So if you don't, if you're not getting your data being read in, just make sure this is the same and make sure all of these names are the same. Now we're just going to read this file in in the start function, and we're going to use the JSON utility to do this. And we use from JSON. We send it the name of the class. And it's asking for a string, and that string is our text asset. And remember, to get the string from a text asset, you have to use dot text. Accidentally deleted the system dot serializable here, so let's add that in. And now let's save this and go give it a test in Unity. 
I'm going to create an empty object. It'll drag my script over onto it. I'll drag a text asset into the appropriate place. And now you can see you've got your list of players. You've got no elements at the moment. Let's hit play. And you can see the three elements have come in. And you can now assign these however suits your game. If you're looking to do more complicated things with JSON, there's a Newton asset that's inside the store and it's only adds 300 kilobytes to your program and it is more robust than the default one. But if you're just trying to do something simple, the default one is fine. They use the same namespace, but if you want to upgrade to it, it's actually really easy to do that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you found it useful, I really appreciate if you subscribe, like, or comment. It really helps me know if people are liking the videos and I should make more. Hope you enjoy your game development.